What is the diagnosis? This CT on lung windows shows increased attenuation in the affected part of the lung with volume loss. Note how the fissures are tethered inward towards the opacity. This was atelectasis. Now what the heck is atelectasis? Well, atelectasis is reduced inflation of all or part of the lung. The synonym collapse is often used interchangeably with atelectasis, particularly when it is severe or accompanied by obvious increase in lung opacity. Reduced volume is seen, and it's accompanied by increased opacity on chest x-ray or attenuation on CT in the affected part of the lung. Atelectasis is often associated with abnormal displacement of fissures, bronchi, vessels, diaphragm, heart, or mediastinum. Other signs include the shifting granuloma sign, compensatory expansion of the unaffected lung, and rib approximation. Distribution can be lobar, segmental, or subsegmental, and atelectasis is often qualified by the descriptors of linear, discoid, or plate-like. We'll discuss these in future videos. There are many mechanisms of atelectasis. The first type is obstructive or reserved. Common causes include mucus plugging, malpositioned endotracheal tube, foreign bodies, tumors, airway rupture, or bronchostenosis. There is resorption of air, which can be complete within 24 hours without evidence of air bronchograms. Wow. Next mechanism is relaxation or passive. It's volume loss due to a space occupying process, such as from a pleural fusion as seen here, a pneumothorax, or a pleural mass. The next type is adhesive. This is due to surfactant deficiency seen in premature neonates, and this leads to decreased alveolar surface tension. The last type we'll talk about is cicatrization or scar. It is volume loss associated with retraction of fibrotic lung, which is irreversible, and traction bronchiectasis. Common causes include tuberculosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and radiation fibrosis. Let's talk about different causes for atelectasis. The first here is lung cancer. This chest x-ray in an adult shows right upper lobe collapse due to a central obstructing squamous cell cancer. This produces the radiographic S sign of Golden with superior migration of the minor fissure and a central convexity corresponding to the mass. The axial CT on the right shows a heterogeneously enhancing right hilar mass obstructing the right upper lobe bronchus. The minor fissure is concave adjacent to the atelectatic lung and convex adjacent to the mass. Here is another case of lung cancer. This is small cell lung cancer, and we see left upper lobe atelectasis due to a central mass producing a convex interface at the hilum. The hyperinflated left lower lobe superior segment forms a crescentic shaped lucency, outlining the aortic arch and manifesting as the loof sickle sign. The coronal CT on the right shows left upper lobe atelectasis, the obstructing central mass, and the hyperinflated left lower lobe located between the aortic arch and the collapsed lung. A cone down chest x-ray of this patient shows that left upper lobe atelectasis from central obstruction of the left upper lobe bronchus. There's superior migration of the hyperinflated left lower lobe superior segment producing the radiographic loof sickle sign. Let's move to our next set of cases. This is endobronchial secretions. It's a common etiology of atelectasis in hospitalized patients particularly. There's sudden onset of low bar or total lung collapse typically seen on an x-ray alone. It's usually relieved with respiratory therapy. Next case is a malpositioned tube. On this chest x-ray, note the malpositioned endotracheal tube with the tip in the right main stem bronchus distal to the crina with resultant atelectatic changes in the left lung. Wow. Here are some plural abnormalities causing atelectasis. The left chest x-ray in this patient with acute chest pain and shortness of breath shows a large left tension pneumothorax. This produces marked left lung atelectasis and mass effect on the mediastinum. The case on the right is round atelectasis. The axial CT in this patient with asbestos-related pleural disease shows bilateral lower lobe rounded atelectasis, exhibiting the comet tail sign, characterized by the curvilinear morphology of the bronchovascular bundles. Note the adjacent calcified pleural plaques seen by the black arrow. Let's move on to endobronchial obstruction. On the left is a foreign body in this elderly individual who aspirated a dental filling. He presented with new left upper lobe opacity showing this metallic foreign body in the lumen of the superior lingular segmental bronchus and surrounding atelectasis. The right hand chest x-ray shows this person who underwent volume reduction therapy with bronchial valves. We can see those on the inset shown in the bottom. There's resultant left upper lobe atelectasis. The raw bronchial valves act as an obstructing foreign body to achieve volume reduction. We also see atelectasis after radiation. 
This axial CT in individual status post-radiation therapy for lung cancer shows cicatricial atelectasis, affecting the superior segment of the right lower lobe and the medial segment of the middle lobe. Wow. Last are endobronchial lesions. On the left, we see a CT of an, an endobronchial carcinoid. There's a central obstructing left lower lobe carcinoid tumor with resultant peripheral lower lobe atelectasis. The carcinoid tumor may be entirely endobronchial, as in this case. The right hand axial CT shows a patient with renal cell cancer, RCC, and a right upper lobe consolidation and volume loss. This is all due to a central endobronchial metastasis, completely obstructing the right main stem bronchus. Wow. You now know a ton about atelectasis. Please subscribe from our awesome anatomy and radiology videos.